What's the deal, family? Welcome back to the channel. Today we got another banger for y'all, man. So look, we got what happens after rappers, rappers fall off. Are you about to run this song one time for the one time, man? And let's get into it, man. 90% of rappers gonna fall off, dog. It is what it is, bro. It's not a game that's made for everybody to last in it, bro. It's really not, bro. And the way rap is now, bro, with the fast food rap, rappers can get money real quick, right? But the faster you climb, the faster you gonna fall, man. So let's see what happens after rappers fall off, man. If y'all end up liking this video, send me more videos to react to. It could be police videos, hood videos, rap, hip-hop type of videos, whichever you like the most. Get at me in the comments. Let me know what you want to see. Let's get to it. Career is about as unpredictable as the music industry itself. Thanks to platforms like SoundCloud and TikTok, these past few years we've seen thousands of new artists blow up seemingly overnight. However, with the rap scene so saturated now and more music being released today than ever before, just as fast as these artists rise is a lot of times just as fast as they fall. Thanks. While for some the fall from grace is rather quiet, disappearing off the grid or back to the farm, as we're about to see for others though, it's often quite difficult to accept this inevitable fate, leading to them doing whatever they can to pay their bills. I just want to ask a question. Um. Are you young Jack? Can you turn around? I mean, I think y'all already put that part together, yeah. Oh, oh so you just fell you must have fell off or something like oh. uh, eleven eleven, shout out to you. I wish you many mornings for many moons. Today you always hear discussion about if a riff what the fuck happened to Riff Raff? Damn I forgot about <laughs> I remember that young jock Uber video, man. That's tough, but Riff Raff? What happened to Riff Raff, dog? Rapper God, fell bro. off or why a rapper fell off. However, nobody ever talks about what happens after a rapper's career declines in the spotlight fades. Damn. Making a living as a successful musician here in 2024 is honestly extremely hard, and I applaud anybody who's able to pull it off. With that being said, the point of this video is not to expose or necessarily call out any of these artists. All good things have to come to an end, and there's really nothing wrong with working a quote, normal 9 to 5 and making money legally to pay your bills. So while it is easy to clown and laugh at these no longer popular rappers such as Young Jock who is out here driving for rideshare apps, along with also appearing on the VH1 show Love and Hip Hop, usually another sign you fell off, I actually respect that way more though than some of these guys. Guys like Smoke Burp or YBN Namir, who as we'll see in a second, have resorted to scamming what little fans they have left. A scam by YBN Namir for $2,000. He basically agreed like he was gonna pay me my money back. He was gonna be, I was gonna be the first one to get my money back once he gets paid or once he gets money in. Yeah, he was waiting for that and never got no response. So pretty much that's the dud, like charge it to the game. The lavish lifestyle of a famous rapper appears to be filled with million dollar record contracts, mansions, chains, watches, girls, and designer clothes. However, the truth is nothing lasts forever. But before we take a look at the true life of a former artist and the constant struggle to maintain that rich rapper image despite up to their knees in pack taxes like Lil Pump, first I gotta tell you about this fun game I've been playing. Winter is the best time to cozy up at home with a mobile game your you can money, really yourself in, and I think I found that perfect game. This hit, mobile, here- Get your money, my boy. Seeing as the fact that rappers have the biggest egos and most simply couldn't let people see them out working a 9 to 5, this raises the question, what do rappers do after they fall off? Well, in order to answer that, it's important for us to first define what it actually means to quote, fall off, because there's definitely- yeah, That boy looking extra <laughs> extra zesty, dog, with the extra- this, he, he got extra sprinkles of zest on this little video clip. Levels to it. According to the Urban Dictionary, to fall Holy off in shit. rap music means to fall off the radar either due to not releasing any material, releasing crap, or selling out. Today, a lot of fans will tell you that guys like DaBaby, Chance the Rapper, or Roddy Rich fell off. However, while yes, I would agree they've decreased in popularity as evident through their recent album sales, they are still raking in millions of dollars each year from the massive hits in their catalog and from still playing shows around the world. Yeah, they didn't fall off. Bro, just because you don't got the hottest songs, like, people don't understand what falling off means nowadays. Nowadays, because everything's so damn fast food material, as soon as you not don't got the number one song no more, you not on that, like, people don't understand, like, when you hot, when you new and you fresh and you a hot artist, that's gonna be, like, it's different. It hits different. Your music is just expanding out to a major audience that nobody ever heard of you before, right? And then after that little, after that one little moment of being hot, there's gonna be people that still want to listen to you, people that don't want to listen to you, right? And then the people that still listen to you, though, are the ones that keep you going. The ones that don't listen to you anymore, they they were on the little trend, you were hot at the moment, 
and then you weren't hot. But that doesn't mean just because you aren't the hot artist at the moment doesn't mean you fell off. It just means now you got your fan base. You still are able to get new fans. Um, and you can still do shows and you can still make money. Snoop Dogg is not hot no more. You don't think people would not want to go to a Snoop Dogg show? <laughs> you know you get what I'm saying? Like, So that's what I mean by that. Uh, just because you're not hot no more don't mean you fell off. And people just people like correlate not being the hot artist to like all of a sudden you fell off. And it's like, bro, there's always new hot artists all the time, bro. All the fucking time. Some some people last longer than others being that hot artist at that moment. But just because you're not hot no more don't mean you fell off. You really fall off when you ain't making music no more. Even if you make music, no, and I mean nobody wants to hear it. Um, and that's pretty much it. Or you sell out and you just do some whole other shit just trying to like get some quick money or whatever because you ain't getting no money from the music. Hey, yo. What happened to your leg? I was at the top. And I fell off. <laughs> With currently over 26 million monthly listeners, the baby is definitely not stressing. With exactly. the certified diamond record, I can guarantee you that Roddy Rich will not be driving for Uber anytime soon. What? Man, so when we talk about Feed the Streets, this dude got a full diamond fork, knife, and napkin in the fork. <laughs> Before it come out, that's crazy. The same also goes for an artist like B.O.B. who besides his flat earth theory, no one has honestly heard about in a decade. But yet with smash hits like Airplanes, Headband, Nothing On You, Strange Clouds, and Magic, I can assure you he's doing just fine financially. Soldier Boy, despite his music career in the dumps, is still raking it in from his iconic hits. So that number, it was like a subscription, like, you know what I'm saying? Like you could text it or call yeah. it. And, and you know what I'm saying? So I'm probably making like 100,000 a month off of that, just people calling that number. <laughs> Even these rappers with only one hit to their name, such as Sheck West or CJ, who have both already covered, they could literally be set for life off Mo Bamba and Whoop D if they've managed their money well. Those were two massively successful mainstream hits. So while it's not like you'll catch the baby out serving chicken at your local fast food spot, you may, however, spot a much smaller artist such as Icy Twat, who is called out for working at Bojangles. I don't even know who that is. There's nothing wrong with grinding and getting paid, especially when you consider just how little artists actually make from streaming revenue. To give you a better idea, Spotify pays an average of only .003 to $0.005 per stream, which while that makes it one of the highest paying streaming platforms, that still isn't even a penny. For example, here's pro era member Desi Hines' 2023 Spotify stats. After working closely with Joey Badass in the past, Desi has kinda disappeared these past few years. With a total of 550,000 streams in 2023, if we do the math real quick, that's only about $2,000. Yeah, there's still Damn. Apple Music and the other streaming sites too, Ooh, but I think shit. it gets a point. Where artists bring in the biggest percentage of their income is through ticket sales and merchandise. <sighs> At the same time, if you're a rapper who fell off like Smoke Perp, nobody will want to come to your shows or buy your merch. <laughs> Which then leads to clips like this that go viral for the wrong reasons, only fueling that fallen off narrative even more. The moment you sign to a record label, you no longer own your music, and they are now taking huge cuts out of your profits. Facts. Despite these multi-million dollar advances we see from labels that are extremely tempting to young rappers, the music industry is a very easy trap to get sucked into. Here's what motherfuckers don't understand about labels. You're taking their money. You're not gonna make a cent until everything you do pays them back that ten million dollars. Yep. Typically when I Yep. And that's how artists get stuck in 360s trying to get off the label. They be trying to they be trying to get off that label, dog, because that they still owe that label five mil. They still owe the label five mil, bro. They didn't really make no money off the music like that. The streaming don't really pay. They didn't have no merch to go with it. Uh, they thought just the music and some Instagram posts was going to make it happen for them. They don't really got no real true following. They just got people that like the music because it's hot right now. <laughs> they don't got a real following, which comes after the hot. If you can still keep it. Yeah, bro. And they bought 37 Lamborghinis, 10 chains. Five five mansions, and now they ain't got no money. A rapper signs a record. 
But they still got to make that music and get that money back, though. <laughs> Contract, they are given a budget in the form of an advance payment. This advance can be millions of dollars. However, it is not free money, but rather a loan that the label expects to recoup in revenue brought in from the artist, with the intent to pay for everything an artist needs to create their album, including general living expenses, studio time, music videos, etc. In many cases, though, these young rappers don't budget at all and instead get carried away blowing their money on cars and jewelry, basically living like rock stars. But then the problem comes when they finally do finish their album and hand it over to the label for release only to watch the sales come back much lower than expected. Thus, they refuse to spend more money on your promotion. When this yep. happens, management will also likely pull back on the number of releases you can drop if your new songs are consistently flopping. And as we've seen on countless occasions, this leads to even more tension from artists who've been shelved by their labels. When everybody said, oh, my record label's controlling me and I can't get out of this deal, bro, the record label's sitting back like, wait a minute, you didn't do anything. Your shit flopped. The $10 million we gave you was for you to make a dope project that wasn't gonna flop. You already broke your contract. So now you think yeah. we're gonna let you go away and just get out of this deal while still owing us money? No. Eventually though, labels will decide. It's like consignment, bro, from our street dudes who's watching. It's like if you just got 10 bricks from somebody, you got 10 whatever, whatever you got. You got it from somebody, right? On consignment. If you don't got that money, bro, in the streets, it could be a lot worse than just getting your shit shelved, right? But you ain't going to be able to get no more dope. You ain't going to be able to get no more. You got to get some money and pay back what you owe. Plus, then maybe you can get some more. But you can't even get that the, the new stash on consignment because you already showed that you ain't responsible with the work. So now we're not about to help you release no... We're not going to help you release no mu new music because your shit already flopped. We're not giving you no money to help you release no new, no new music. But you still bind to this contract and you can't sign to no other labels. And any music you get released because you signed to us, it goes straight to us. So that's why artists stop dropping music because now anything they drop, they got to one, get the money on their own so they can do the video, do the song, do the promo, do all that. Right? And then after even getting all that money just to do all that, then the music comes out. They got to get the money from the sales from the music, which is barely being promoted because they're not really trying to put money into promoting it like the label will. And then any, music, any money they do make legally has to go back to that label because you still own two mil. There, and that's the story. <laughs> Side, they no crazy. longer want to work with an artist and then drop them. And while artists still have some money coming in from their past catalog, usually at this point it's nowhere near enough to fund that lavish lifestyle they had been living. You'll often hear rappers claim that it was their decision to go independent, which while that could be part of it, at the same time these major labels hold the power and influence in the industry, and if we're being honest, if they really wanted you, they would have dropped a bigger bag. One thing y'all gotta know is now, your boy is independent, bruh. I'm fully independent, just me. You feel me? I ain't get dropped by my label, no crazy shit, nothing like that. Basically, me and my label, we just weren't seeing like eye to eye and shit, so, so uh, they finally let me go after a long time. <laughs> Meanwhile, this whole time, all the bills these rappers have been putting off have also been quickly adding up. The rent yep. on their new condo is due, the lease payment for that new sports car, lawyer fees, accountant fees, and then of course we can't forget taxes. Today, given how easy it is to record yourself straight from your bedroom, we've seen thousands of new artists blow up off one or two songs on SoundCloud or TikTok. However, with the music industry now more saturated than ever, it's time to answer the question, what happens after their 15 minutes of fame is up? There are two different routes a rapper can go once they have truly fallen off. Route 1 is to deny the fact that they fell off and continue with their career as if nothing happened. Or Route 2 is to accept that they had a good run and peacefully depart onto something new. Let's start with the first one. While there's nothing wrong with continuing to make music because you simply love making it and for the fans who still listen, whether that be a million or a few hundred, however, there are a few clear signs that a rapper's career has rapidly declined. Hey, all this money to just come here and stand like this. Y'all look weird as shit. Turn the f up. You are not too cool to jump. Turn the f up. Along with significantly low album sales and streams will also come a significant decrease in the size of crowds at their shows. One of the best ways to judge an artist's true popularity is through physical ticket sales, because an artist like Smoke Perp can have 4 million followers on Instagram, but how many people will really come to his show? For this reason, you'll often see struggling artists instead shift their focus to overseas fans and try and rake in some money there while they still can, since they typically only perform there once every few years the venues sell out, which while that's great and fans that's seem true. to enjoy the performances, you just have to remember that an artist like Icy Narco, who is 
was posting and flexing about his sold out dates in France, couldn't even sell half the amount of tickets here in America. So then you'll begin to see them take smaller bookings such as frat parties and birthday events. In an effort to stay relevant, another tactic these falling rappers try is to hop on whatever wave and sound is currently trending at the moment, such as smoke perp clearly biting yeet. But Ooh, if I didn't even know that was Smoke Perp, I just would have assumed that was a Yeet song. I ain't even gonna lie to you. That's blatant right there. While some are to stay and milk whatever last dollar they can out of their music Dang. career, others instead choose to leave on a more peaceful note. One of the rare cases where a former rapper becomes even more popular in the music space after rapping is Joe Budden, who following a total of eight albums decided to officially retire in 2018 to focus solely on his new career as a podcast He did it right. The same goes with Trinidad James, who after blowing up with his debut hit All Gold Everything was later dropped by his label in 2014. But now along with landing a few acting roles, Trinidad James is also a host of the Full Size Run podcast on Complex. I just feel that if niggas was gonna stop me from doing my thing in the game, they would have been stop me. And if you were going to kill me, you should have killed me five years ago. Once one of the hottest rappers out thanks to his smash billboard number one, This Is Why I'm Hot, following just his second album, Mims chose to put the mic down and move into the technology field. A few years later, launching this new app called Recordgram with the goal to help artists and producers contact each other with no unnecessary middlemen. Along with opening up his own restaurant in Houston and winning the Good Morning America title for Ultimate Burger Spot, former rapper Bun B has also been teaching a hip hop and religious course at Rice University since 2011. This class, Religion and Hip Hop Culture, offers an opportunity to explore the connections between religion and hip hop in ways that open us to seeing our world differently. Ice Ice Baby rapper Vanilla Ice has been buying and flipping lakefront properties in South Florida for the past 15 years, even landing a show on HGTV called The Vanilla Ice Project, which ran for a successful nine straight seasons. Khalees, the rapper behind the 2003 smash Milkshake, has since moved onto a farm where she's apparently found liberation with the 30-plus animals she cares for, while also still collecting checks from the countless movies and shows her song is featured in, such as Dodgeball and Mean Girls. Although Lil Xan, best known for his SoundCloud hit Betrayed back in 2017, still puts out music every few months. It's also great to see that despite his fall in the music scene, Lil Xan has turned his life around and is now completely sober. I've been sober now for a year and I believe six months. Wow, that's yeah. dope. But while not every former rapper is smart enough to develop an app like Mims, nor do I see them having the patience to care for a farm, how do these other rappers make money? Often with criminal backgrounds and covered in face tattoos, it can be hard for rappers to land regular jobs after their music career fizzles out. So instead, one of the most common and easiest bags you'll see an artist desperate for money take is to begin posting promo all over social media. From posting yep. and tagging clothing brands such as Fashion Nova, for example, to straight into promo, paid advertisements, uh, what's another one a lot of rappers do? OnlyFans, not a lot of rappers, some rappers do OnlyFans. But mostly promo. Tons of promo. Because they all, they all got Instagram followers and TikTok followers. So that's just like the easiest route to go in. Which I mean, hey, get your money. <laughs> Can't be mad. You got to get some money somehow. Yeah. Banning reposts and hundreds of advertisements on their stories every single hour. Then you get artists like Smoke Perp, who after I was curious about how much he's charging for a feature these days, basically started begging me to buy one in my DMs. Now, to be honest, I actually like a lot of Smoke Perp's music and probably would have really tried to work with them for a verse. That is, if I hadn't seen the numerous posts and videos about the nightmare that ensues securing a Perp feature. Anyways, we go back and forth. We agreed on him sending me just the vocals, mm -hmm. separately. Uh -huh. He never sends them. And who knows how many of these other SoundCloud rappers are out here scamming what used to be their loyal fans just for a few hundred bucks. Fans agree to pay these rappers to hop on their song and send them the money, only to be ghosted by them and never hear anything back. However, there's definitely other ways these rappers get money too. Driving for Uber Eats and DoorDash is actually pretty common, especially since these rappers don't have to show their face delivering food, along with some also becoming truck drivers such as former Houston rapper Lil Troy. Working like this allows Lil them Troy. to avoid getting called out such as Young Jock and Roscoe Dash have been, both of them going viral after multiple people claim to see them driving for Uber and Lyft. As an entrepreneur, it's important to have multiple sources of income. The Lyft is no exception to creating multiple sources of income. There's nothing wrong with driving Lyft. Working for call centers or remote jobs from home is another frequent route many go to avoid showing their face. As a former Uber de East delivery driver, I'm just going to say that is the worst shit in the world. Uh, it's not the worst shit in the world, dog. It really ain't. Because, like, if you're doing something like YouTube or things like that, it keeps it keeps your schedule flexible. But when I tell you, dog, I'll stress the fuck out doing that shit, dog. Woo! 
to be a rapper and then have to go do that shit, bro. Oh, I can only imagine, bro. Because that shit was stressful. I ain't even famous. <laughs> Real talk. Because while again, there's nothing wrong with working at Walmart, as we saw with this post that went viral last year, allegedly God. showing Ugly God working there. Despite Ugly God himself saying it was Photoshop, the picture spread all over social media as fans got a good laugh, many believing that his rap money had truly dried out. Similar to Bun B, some rappers trying to get into the food and restaurant business, such as Blueface with his soul food spot, Blues Fish and Soul, or another SoundCloud rapper, Comethazine, who owns multiple Subway locations. I be smart that. I still got ice and shit, but like, I got some smart business to have. So, yeah. Dang, you got two subways already? Mm -hmm. That's very impressive. And, and you're didn't fire nobody. Shit's still working itself, you feel me? You'll also see some artists go back to college or finish getting their degree online. Some, like Designer, rent different properties out that they own. Some, like Blueface, Lil Pump, or the Island Boys go the OF route. Some, like Fetty Wap, go back to making money in the streets. Or some continue to work behind the scenes in the industry, ghostwriting or producing. Then you'll get a rare case, like T Grizzly, who after beginning to stream on Twitch, now claims to make over 200k a month just playing GTA. So what I did was I created a server, a, G a Grand Theft Auto server. I get paid from the server because you, you gotta pay to get in. I stream it on Twitch, right? I get paid from Twitch. I take the Twitch videos that I already streamed, put it on YouTube, get paid from YouTube. Should turn it to down there 50 a week. He's smart as hell for that, bro. He's smart as hell. Cause I mean, dog, when I just heard those Spotify numbers, I'm like 500,000 streams get you 2,000. I'm like, damn, bro. The YouTubers really can make more than rappers. Like if you get numbers like that, that's crazy, crazy. So he's smart. T Grizzly was probably one of the, not one of the first, but one of the first that really blew up doing the whole GTA 5 RP streaming. Now you see a lot more rappers be doing streams, reaction videos, all types of that, all that stuff, bro. But another very common and easy bag a lot of these guys take is signing up for Cameo, the website where you can pay celebrities to send you custom videos. So for example, you could pay Riff Raff $100 to send you a personalized video for any occasion, which I actually went ahead and did, and it's about exactly what I expected. 11-11, uh, shout out to you. I wish you many monies for many moons. Dan Tony on the wings for me and Holly. You know it's all about how you're feeling. Because how you're feeling, yeah, right, Mama? How you're feeling determines how your day's going to go and how, how you're going to be treating others. If you're, if you're sleepy, you're going to be sleepy. Dan Tony, wings. Money well spent, if you ask me. The journey of a rapper who has fallen off is about so much more than just reclaiming their lost fame. While some are lucky enough to sit back and enjoy their passive income, for others it's about rediscovering themselves and embracing change for a new life outside of music. Because one thing's for sure, although the music stops, the story keeps going. That's facts. And again, don't... Great way to end that one, man. That's what happens when rappers fall off, man. Always had, you know... Always focus on what you what you doing, bro. Who you are, what you doing, and never focus on trying to chase the bag because that bag might run out. That bag might run thinneth, and you got to keep moving and keep going. But if you put more energy maybe into the crap, maybe that bag has a longer run time. You know what I'm saying? But that's it. Y'all let me know what you think in the comments on it. Um, get at me with any more videos you want me to react to. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Remember to keep it real. Real is rare. Real always reaches everyone. Next time. Peace.